Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Again, let's stand for opening prayer. Again. Right. Greg, would you open us in prayer, please? Amen. All right. Reverend Ledger is going to come and lead us in a couple songs. Well, thank the Lord for victory, for victory in Jesus this morning. That's right. Let's turn to 432. 432, an old hymn by Charles Wesley, Arise, My Soul, Arise. 432 in your hymnal.
number 74. 74 in your hymnal. I just love this song. I'll just keep singing it and singing it. Number 74, I sing the mighty power of God. Sing the mighty power of God that makes the mountains rise, that spread the blowing seas abroad and build the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines. for the, the message this morning, the Sunday school lesson. It was, a, it was a pretty good one. I didn't get a chance to really study it. I just got to, I read it and, and tried to think about it a little bit. And it was, uh, it made me wonder about, you know, the talents. Talents, all of us have talents. I wonder if some of you know what yours are, because sometimes I wonder, I know, I, I think I know what a couple of mine are, but wonder if have more and if I'm using the ones that I've got the way that I that God wants me to and then you know and then it, it's also it was also a lesson of, of selfishness too Amen. and I, uh, I I was really bad about that in my younger days I don't think I'm as bad as I, I was then but I think about that but I I also think about what if you know we, we have talents and the people that that have talents that don't really believe in God. You know, I talk about that a lot because it, it, it concerns me because I got friends that don't believe. So, but anyway, it's, I wonder, you know, some of you guys that don't believe in God and, and don't even think about any of that. And then I go to the next level of it and think about, well, do you know anybody here or anywhere else that, that has changed, that's bought into God, that's bought into all the, the, the Bible and everything the Bible says and, and bought into God, and if you notice a difference in them. Because right. uh, I know that there's some people here that have, have, have known me for a while and seen a difference in me. Um, my, I talked to my dad and hadn't talked to him in like three or four years, and I, I talked to him, and he said he could even tell a, uh, the difference in the tone of my voice. And all of that's because of God. Now, and I, I question you guys that don't believe in God, if, if, not, if there's not a God, then what do you contribute that to? You know, how, what made me do that? So, you know, in a sense, I, I know I probably shouldn't say this, but even if there wasn't a God, uh, me thinking there is a God has changed me for the better, made me a better person, made me happier, 
and I, I, I can't, I've never been happier with, with and, and I have less than I've ever had. And all that's because of my belief in God. So, um, you know, it's just something to think about. Now that, that lesson, that's one of those, those reasons I say every Sunday that the lesson is a good one because there's so many different ways to look at them and it, and it takes you so many different places. And that's where that one took me this morning. Amen. So, Amen. anyway, there's my testimony. <laughs> Anyone have anything else? Anything? Yes, sir. Aaron? Yeah, whatever. Yes, sir. Okay. George's Pierre again. Yeah. Miss Rhonda? The Blacks. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Pray for all the new guys here. May they find Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Joe? Kevin? Okay. Yeah. John? Okay. Yeah. Jacob? Mercy. Okay. Steve? Will? Okay. Yep. Remember Ray Wooten? Remember Ray Wooten? Yeah. And Stephen? Stephen will be, I think Stephen, <laughs> Stephen's coming Steve. back with him? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Joe? I want to thank God for you because you have changed. I see you last night more than ever. You smile more than ever. You stop and conversate with the guys. Yeah. yeah. From here to, to, you know, sometimes you know a world where you think, but you change your life. And I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Love you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I'm going to stand for prayer. Joe, would you lead us, please? Your name, Lord.
Father in God, that just have turned the back and do not we want you to touch their lives too, Father, today in the name of your Father, because you're the one who went first. Neither do we pray to God. We want to see each other in heaven and be around each other up in heaven, Father, celebrate the goodness of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we cast out on this campus all that is not yours, my God, all the darkness, the victory, the fighting, and confusion. Almighty God, we cast out all that's done God in this house, Father, all the person who had mechanisms to try to make us believe that you're not God, Father, the conception on this campus, Almighty Lord, we cast all the power to try up in the mighty name of Jesus. We call it glory. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's joy in the name of Jesus. There's love in the name of Jesus. There's direction and comfort and peace, Lord. We thank you this morning. Amen, amen, amen. 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 All right, ushers, please. Dear Lord, I pray that all of us are able to take in what you give us today and able to really open our hearts to you. Because everything you've given me and everyone here that has served you is beyond measure. Thank you, Lord, for that. And I pray that we continue to cherish that in which you give to us. I pray also that everything that happens, no matter how bad it gets, that all of us realize and remember that you're there for us. And that whatever bad happens, you'll still pull us through. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Faith and pride, two words for the day. We need all of the one that you can get and as little as the other one as possible. Yeah. All right, Reverend Ledger, lead us in another song. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Song number 433. 433 in your hymnal. It's a prayer. It's a prayer. My faith looks up to thee.
his message this morning. All right. Thank you, brother. Good morning. I must apologize to you this morning. I'm still suffering from a, a scratchy throat, so I do have a lozenger in my uh, my training tells me I'm not to speak with anything in my mouth. But I'm afraid if I don't keep this lozenger, I don't know if I'll be able to say anything, and some of you may like that. Amen. Oh, amen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Nonetheless, <laughs> I'm trusting that the Lord will give me help this morning. I'm so grateful and thankful that, uh, that I'm standing this morning. And uh, I too must, uh, must say that, that, that God works. Amen. God is absolutely working here. And, and we sang a song in Sunday school this morning where it, 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 the words told us that, that Jesus gave. He gave, and we learned about the talents this morning and what we're to do with those. We're supposed to give, and this morning, my message is on giving. I did not consult the Sunday school book to what, it, what his message was, nor did I speak with Sister Rhonda concerning the song she sang this morning. I had no idea. I had no idea. But God knew. God knew, and I, and I, and, and I thank God for it. And, uh, yeah. and, and, the, and the word of God clearly tells us, if we give, it will be given unto you. Very clear. If we give, it will be given unto you. And, and I, I just hope, with the help of God, I can, I can bring this principle across this morning. Uh, grab your Bibles and turn with me to Luke chapter 6. If you haven't already read Luke chapter 6, I would encourage you to read it. Luke chapter 6 is filled with some, with some wonderful things. This teaches us when Jesus explained to the Pharisees that, uh, that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Chapter 6 deals with Jesus choosing of the 12. It deals with beatitudes and woes. And, and chapter 6 also deals with the law of love. And, and I'm going to pull one verse from that particular section. And it also talks about the wise and the foolish builders. So there's a lot in chapter 6. So take some time and, and read that entire chapter. But I just want to pull verse 68 this morning and, and speak about verse 38 this morning. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. Amen. Most gracious Father, we bless thee, we thank thee. And Father, just for a few minutes this morning, Lord, we invite you here just to be with us, Lord, just to Lend us ears to hear, Lord, and a heart to receive. And above all, Father, just to give you thanks. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. 
we cannot expect our situations to improve unless we learn how to improve our attitudes about giving. Giving involves far more than money. Giving is an attitude that allows us to give all that we are, all that we have and possess, all that we have and possess in the Holy Spirit to provide greater glory for God. Giving begins with the realization that for him and through him and to him all things to whom be glory forever. Romans 11 and 36. In other words, Jesus is the source, the means, and the goal of all of life. Without Jesus, there isn't life. So people's views of success has little to do with their faith and spiritual wholeness. People focus on personal accomplishments, family solidarity, and emotional fulfillment. Only 7% identify spiritual wholeness and development as a factor that will produce a successful life. 7%. The Christian faith commends sacrifice, servanthood, and sharing as a means to significance. How is it possible to have more than 120 million adults attending Christian churches on a regular basis, but only 15 million who grasp the message that success is not about personal accomplishment or material possessions. First Timothy 6 and 6 through 8. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Amen. Let us be there with content. God is saying he's already provided us with food and clothing. Amen. Let's be content. You have everything we need, food, clothing, and the word of God. Amen. His shelter, his protection, what more do we need? We need nothing else. The basic principle that Jesus is teaching is that if you want to change what you are getting, then we must begin by giving love giving goods, giving services, resources, time, our energy, our commitment, teaching, intercessory prayer and support and whatever it is that we believe would give God the greatest glory. The whole Sunday school lesson was about us giving, giving. The Lord assures us that with the biblically based principle or the biblically based promise, whatever man sows, that will he also reap. Whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. But if we sow sparingly, then we can expect to reap sparingly. Biblical promise, the biblical principles. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, one out of every six verses deals with money. Of the 29 parables Christ told, 16 deal with a person and his money. Give of your monetary resources or they may end up controlling you or your heart. Many of us do not give because we are afraid of losing the little resources we have. That's why we don't give. We are afraid that if we give 10% of these $5 we own, that's 50 cents less we have. And if we give, up that, give that 50 cents, we're now poor. We're now destitute. Not understanding and believing it was God that gave you that $5 in the first. It was nothing you did. 
But we must understand and realize all that we have belongs to the Lord. We, we, we're leasing everything we have on earth. We're leasing it. We are renters. God holds the deed to all things. However, Jesus assures us that whatever we have belongs to him anyway. And if we give it away, he will replace it with everything that we according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ. Amen. We cannot outgive God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the word of God tells me that he would open up a window in heaven and pull out a blessing. <laughs> <laughs> we have to come to the realization that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he says he will do and perhaps one of the most comprehensive promises in the Bible comes from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 9 and 8 that says God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. Amen. That covers all areas of life. That covers every aspect of life. We should not hesitate to give unreservedly with such a complete guarantee. That is complete. God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Not some, but all grace. <laughs> God grace is already sufficient. Whenever you need his grace, it's sufficient to take you through that moment. But what this is saying, God will give it all to you. You would never find yourself in a, in a situation that God cannot and will not help you. Never. No matter where you find yourself, no matter what situation you find yourself in, all grace abound toward you. That ye, always having all sufficiency, never lacking, never, yes. never lacking in all things, may abound to every good work. See, that's the part we don't want to read. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> every good work. <laughs> Yeah, God ain't, ain't going to supply you with all this grace for you to out there and do evil. Uh-uh, no. No, there is no evil in God. There is no darkness in God. So he's not going to give you all his grace for you to continue to be in evilness. No, 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 toward good work. And as a brother taught us today, faith and works go together. When you come to Christ, something inside of you will stir you to give. And this is my favorite expression. I love this expression. Christianity is not a lazy boy religion. You can't get saved and say, now I'm going to kick back in my lazy boy. I'm going to pick my feet up. No. When Christ saved you, the work begins. The work begins. And we work while we have life. <laughs> and we can get in the lazy boy when we leave this earth. But up until then, there's work to be done. Praise God. Praise God. We've sat idly for a number of years. So why wouldn't we work once we receive Christ? I think we will want to work. We will want to be able to move. And to build. 
and to help, to support, to furnish. Christianity is active. It's more so than reactive. It's preventative. It's preventative. We don't wait to see a need. We give so there won't be a need. (laughs) Oh, we don't understand. When Jesus looked over the multitude, Jesus saw. He saw a need. He saw. So he provided that need to teach his disciples. Wherever you go, whoever you meet, whoever you see, there is a need. It is incumbent upon you to find out what that need is. And when you know it, then what are we supposed to do? Give to take care of that need. That's what Jesus did. And that's what we must do. Jesus is teaching us that give is imperative. It is continuous. It's not a one-time shop thing. It is continuous. He expects obedience. He expects submission and trust toward the greatest giver of all time. God so loved the world that he what? Gave. (laughs) Why would we begin to think we don't have to give? (laughs) God so loved the world. Make it personal. God so loved Jerome, he gave Jesus. What makes Jerome think He ain't got to give none. Come on now. (laughs) Oh my. Do we understand? God has bestowed upon us a spiritual nature as a giver. When God formed Adam and Eve, what did God do? Gave them life. To not give is to be disobedient and inconsistent to our new Christ-like nature. You, You know... I, I, I don't like judging, and I, ah, that's a tough, that's a terrible word. But I observe, and we all do. And we all know what the Bible tells us. If you profess to be a Christian, if you professing to be Christ like, why aren't you giving? Why aren't you bearing fruit? You don't become Christ to sit on your duff. No. You got to give. And even if you don't want to go out there and go into the world and give, I would like to see every professing Christian on this campus give something to the campus. Do something on campus if you're afraid to go out there and give. Do something on campus. Whenever there's a bell for something to be done, no Christian should have to be called to go do it. They should be first in line. They should be first in line. Who was first in line to die for you? Jesus Christ. Who is first in line praying to the Father on our behalf? Jesus Christ. 
every, every professing Christian should at least give back to this place. Minimum. And you know what? And if you say you're tired, God will give you the grace that will take you through that portion of that task. And when that task is done, you can go slumber. You can go lay down. He said, I would abound all grace towards you to do a good work. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, don't tell me you don't understand, you don't know. God will give. A God beloved keeps on giving even when it knows that a certain person probably will not return the favor. If we love God, then we will give. Let your giving grow out of the overflow of the love that Christ has put in your heart. Brother Ledger, that is the key to everything Christian. What's in your heart? What's in, if Christ is not in your heart, you cannot profess to be a Christian. It is too difficult to fake being a Christian. You can't do it. You can't do it. It'll cause you too much pain. It'll cause you too much trouble. It'll keep you awake at night. You can't do it. If Christ isn't in your heart, you don't have Christ. You don't carry his name. Stop it. Stop it. Be real. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop it. Because God knows. And you have, to, you have to account for that when you see Jesus. You have to account for that. Just understand where you're at and ask God to help you. That's what you do. That's how you grow. That's how you mature. Jesus knew that our life is a series of choices to give or to withhold what we should give away. Essentially, Jesus is saying, if you do not use what I have given you, you will lose it. The Sunday school lesson. That's right. If you do not give what I give you, you will lose it. And Jesus speaks about that when he's speaking in, um, in terms of eternal life. Jesus tells us, if we keep our life while we're here on earth, and then not only will we lose it here on earth, but we won't gain eternal life in heaven. But if we give our life, and what Jesus means by that, if we surrender or submit or commit our earthly life to him, then we will gain eternal life with him in heaven. Praise God. We still have to give, but he gives us the choice. We choose. We have, to, we have to take on the giving nature of our God. He's the supreme giver. We have to take on his nature. And Jesus taught that the person who had one talent and buried it had it taken from him because he refused to give it away. He refused to give it away. Jesus knew that we need to give more than money. As life does not consist merely of our possessions. The Lord Jesus wants us to give some of the following to enrich our lives. The prime example, the rich young ruler. He's done all those other things. From, from childhood up, everything that pertained to God, everything that pertained to God, he fulfilled. 
But the moment Jesus asked him to do something that concerned mankind, that would benefit someone other than himself, that required him to give of himself to help someone lower than him, he would not receive that. What the word said, he went away sorrowful. No, Lord, I will serve you as long as I can keep all this. And Jesus would have no part of it. No part of it. Okay, give friendship. A man that has friends must show himself friendly. Friendly people are loving people who do not merely look for their own interests, but also look out for the interests of others. They have the same attitude that was found in Christ Jesus. Jesus told his disciples, now I consider you friends. Now I will lay down my life for you. <laughs> we think brother have, have a larger, uh, I don't know the word for it, but we use brother for a higher esteem. But when Jesus used that word friend, when he was speaking to his disciples, that elevated, that elevated them. Jesus said, I now call you friend. Why? Because I'm going to lay down my life for you. A friend that's sick is closer to you than a brother. Jesus said that. Jesus said that. So we must give friendship. Give intercessory prayer and support. There is no human defense so great that it cannot be influenced by prayer. And, and prayer, when, and, and we pray a lot here. And we pray for situations, to change situations. But greater still, when we pray, we pray to change people. When people change, situations change. <laughs> hear me, hear me clearly now, hear me clearly. When all we want are situational changes, sometimes God won't grant that. Because we don't want to change. Then we make God a vending machine. That's all we want God for, is to benefit us. But we don't want to change so that we can benefit God. Amen. So we can give God the glory. If prayers go unanswered, it may be because you don't want to change. And sometimes, if you change, your situation will also change. Amen. Think about that. Think about that. Give love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control to every situation. What does that sound like? The fruit of the Spirit. That's exactly what that is. The fruit of the Spirit. This fruit contains the essential spiritual nutrients that supply people with the appetite to taste, to see that the Lord is good. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. <clears throat> These are the things. These are the things that carry Jesus. This is the nature of Jesus Christ. Do you get that? The fruit of the Spirit. If you say you have the Spirit of God in you, you have these components. Amen. You can't have two and say you have the Spirit of God. Nine components make up the fruit. Nine, not six, Nine. not five. And if you lack in any one of them, you pray. Lord, help me in this. Help me in this. We must give generously without thought of what you might get in return. Jesus said, love your enemies and give expecting nothing in return. 
for your reward will be great in heaven. Praise God. Give freely. Freely you have received, freely you give. We must give people a listening ear. Let us learn how to be swift to hear and slow to speak and and slow to anger. Love is patient. Love is kind. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. When we give to advance his kingdom and, and his righteousness, we are assured that God will supply all of, ni- of life's necessities to us. This alleviates worry of being in want. Giving is an antidote for anxiety (laughs) because we worry so much about what we don't have and about what we need and about where is it coming from. Give and let God take care of that situation. (laughs) We simply give what he has given to us. We give simply because what he has given to us. And then we do not have to worry about what we will need tomorrow. We don't have to worry about that. Uh, Tomorrow has his own issues. (laughs) You focus on today. And you give what God has given you today. If all you have to give is a smile, give that. That is all God is asking you to do. If God has put a smile on your face today, you share that smile. Say, God gave this to me, and I'm giving it to you. Good morning. Praise God. Let's give God the glory. See, sometimes we make it too complicated. Let's not make it complicated. Jesus said, come to me like the little children. They don't come to Jesus already knowing geometry, already knowing calculus, statistics, none of that. Algebra one, algebra two, no. They come with Jesus. Slates are clean, absorbing everything the teacher has to say. And you know what? And believing and trusting in it. Not analyzing it, not doing anything to it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So be it, Lord. Praise God forever. So once again, give, and it will be given unto you. Let's stand. I thank God so much how he knitted all this together this morning. It was truly amazing to me, and God does it so often, and and so much here. And uh, I would never walk away from this place not knowing the hand that God has on this place right here. Amen. God is here. This is holy ground here. I know without a shadow of a doubt that this is God's. This is God. And you're here because God brought you here. Receive what the Lord has for you while you're here. Seek him while he may be found. This is his. He's here. 
He's here. We thank you, blessed Father, for thy love, thy grace, thy mercies. We thank you, Father, for your loving kindness. We thank you for your giving. In your giving. In your giving. In your giving. And Father, be with each and every one of us throughout the remainder of this day, Father. Blessing and anointing, Lord. Every step we take, Lord. Every word we utter, every thought we think, Lord. Bless it, Lord, to the glory of God. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.